we are told that a van drives around a circular curve of radius r with linear speed v. On a second curve of the same radius, the van has linear speed 1 third v. And you could view linear speed as the magnitude of your linear velocity. How does the magnitude of the van's centripetal acceleration change after the linear speed decreases? So pause this video and see if you can figure it out on your own. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. We know that the magnitude of centripetal acceleration in general is equal to linear speed squared divided by radius, the radius of the curve. All right, now let's work through this together. So let's first think about the first curve. And so the first curve, the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration for curve one, I have another subscript one here, for this is around the first curve. They tell us that our linear speed is v, so we're gonna have v squared over, and the radius of that curve is r. So it's just going to be a straight up v squared over r for that first curve, the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration. Now what about the second curve? So the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration around the second curve, that's what that two is, is going to be equal to, they tell us we now have a linear speed of 1 third v. So in our numerator we're gonna square that, 1 third v squared, all of that over the curve of the same radius. So our radius is still r. And so let's just do a little algebraic simplification. 1 third v times 1 third v is just going to be 1 ninth v squared. So it's going to be 1 ninth v squared over r. All I did is square this numerator here. Or I could write this as 1 ninth times v squared over r. And the reason why I wrote this in green is because this is the exact same thing as this. And so this is going to be equal to, this is equal to 1 ninth times, instead of writing v squared over r, I could say, hey, that's our centrip the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration around the first curve the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration around the first curve. So how does the magnitude of the van's centripetal acceleration change after the linear speed decreases? Well, around the second curve, we have one ninth the magnitude of centripetal acceleration. So we could say the magnitude, mag, or I could just say, well, they already asked us, how does the magnitude change? So we could say decreases, decreases by a factor factor of nine. And I wrote it in this language. You could say it got multiplied by a factor of one ninth, or you could say it decreases by a factor of nine, because on the Khan Academy exercises that deal with this, they use language like that. Let's do another example. Here we're told a father spins his daughter in a circle of radius r at angular speed omega. Then the father extends his arms and spins her in a circle of radius 2r with the same angular speed. How does the magnitude of the child's centripetal acceleration change when the father extends his arms? Once again, pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Well, the key realization here and we, der we derived this in a previous video, is to realize that the magnitude of centripetal acceleration is equal to r times our angular speed squared. And so initially, so the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration initially, I'll do that with a sub i, that is going to be equal to well, they're using the same notation. We have omega as our angular speed and our radius is r, so it's just going to be r omega squared. And then when we think about the father, he extends his arms. So then you have the magnitude of your centripetal acceleration. I could say final or extended, or I'll just say final, sub f. What is that going to be equal to? Well now, the, now our radius, the circle, the radius of our circle is 2r. So it's going to be 2r, and they say the same angular speed. So our angular speed is still omega, 2r, omega squared. Well, this part right over here, r omega squared, that was just our uh, the magnitude of our initial centripetal acceleration. That was the magnitude of our initial centripetal acceleration. And so you see that our the magnitude of our centripetal acceleration has increased by a factor of two. Increased, increased by a factor of two, and we're done.